Hi everyone, I've already applied a full face of makeup apart from blush, which has been a completely alien experience for me, because as you know, I'm a blush girl. Anyway, by the end of this video, that will all be rectified. In fact, by the end of this video, I think I'm probably gonna look like a clown because I'm about to start applying a lot of blush to different areas of my face to demonstrate how you can completely change the look of your face with just blush and do it in a really soft way, much softer than contour. So you can slim down the face, plump up the face, you can lift, you can sculpt, all with blush. So we're gonna get straight on with it. If you are new here, hi, my name's Gemma. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'd love it if you haven't done so already. Please subscribe to the channel, click on the like button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos like these. So it infuriates me that as soon as we hit 40, we're only shown one way of applying blush and that is to lift and sculpt the cheekbones and that doesn't suit everybody. It's not going to work on everyone's face shape because all our face shapes are different. So in this video, we're going to go through all ways of applying blush depending on the look that you want to achieve for your face type. Let's get on with it. Just a side note, you can use any blush you want to to create any of these looks. Anything you have to hand will do. I'm gonna be using a cream blush just because I think they're really easy to apply and they're really easy to blend into the skin to make them look incredibly natural. You can really diffuse the edges and soften everything off, so that's why I prefer cream, but if you prefer powder or liquid, you can use any that you want to. There are specific blush finishes that are going to emphasize certain looks and I will go in to that as we go into each blush placement. Whether you go for a dewy finish, a radiant finish, or a matte finish will often depend on the skin quality and what you're wanting to emphasize. So I'll go through all those as we go through the techniques. So let's start with the sculpted lifted look. This sits really high up on the cheekbone. It doesn't diffuse too far down the cheek. It is incredibly elevated and because it's on an angle, it just makes everything seem more sculpted, more lifted, more elevated and slightly more youthful. You don't have to do this way if you don't want to, but if you do want to give it a try, usually you start three finger widths away from the corner of the nose or if you draw an invisible line from the corner of the outer iris, that is where your blush placement should start to give you that really lifted appearance. I like to apply the blush first and then go in tapping motions over the top of the blush to diffuse out all the edges to make it look natural. I think this is really, really important. Depending on what blush you use depends on how easy this is going to be. If you have a slightly dewy foundation that might have a tacky finish and you go in with a matte powder blush, you may find that the blush grabs to the foundation slightly. So you might want to powder the area first before you go in with blush to assure that that doesn't happen. Because if you can't diffuse the edges out properly, it's going to look just like a line on the face and it's not going to look natural. If you're wanting to emphasize the sculpted lifted look a little bit more, drag the blush a little bit around towards the temples, around the corner of the brow just to give a little bit more lift. Now I think that this method of placement is incredibly beautiful and it definitely does the job. However, if you do have quite an angular face to begin with and you're wanting to try and disguise the fact that you have an angular face and maybe go for something that makes your cheeks look more youthful and more plump, this is not going to be the method of application that you're going to want to go for. If you're wanting to lift and sculpt but you're wanting it to look very soft, use something with more of a natural finish, more of a natural matte. If you're wanting to emphasize the lift and the sculpt, using something like a radiant blush or even a dewy blush will really emphasize that, rebound the light and draw attention to the tops of the cheekbones, really making them pop and look really sculpted. So we've already achieved a sculpted lifted cheek. However, if you are wanting to go one further and lift the corner of the eye, giving the eye a little bit more of an elevated appearance, you can definitely do that as well. And you can incorporate it in the original lifted sculpted blush look. So you can do both at the same time, a lifted sculpted cheek and a lifted sculpted eye, or one 
or the other. It depends on the look you want to achieve. So to achieve this, all you need to do is place a little bit of blush right on that outer corner of the eye and just slightly in a little bit where you would usually place your concealer and blend in a diagonal motion through the eyebrow and up to the temples. Then you can diffuse out the edges and this seriously works a treat to lift that outer corner of the eye, just making everything look more elevated and youthful. But again, that's not going to suit everybody's face shape or their wants and needs. So let's move on to the next method of application. We all lose a lot of facial fullness as we age. And if you're wanting to fake that facial fullness and get back that beautiful, plump, bouncy cheek that you used to have maybe 10, 20 years ago, you can definitely do that with blush. Again, it infuriates me that we're told that once we hit a certain age, we can't apply blush to the apples of the cheeks without it looking really droopy and without it aging us, it's completely false. It's all about where you start applying and how you apply the blush to the cheeks. So I like to start two finger widths away from the nose or the center of the pupil. I start as high as I possibly can. So I'm basically starting where I have my dark circles that high, and then I'm blending downwards slightly, but I never go lower than the base of my nose. If you don't go lower than the base of the nose, you should be okay. For this application, instead of the previous application where I was tapping in a diagonal motion, really lifting up the cheek. I'm going in a circular pattern just to diffuse the edge and give the impression of a rounder, fuller cheek. I absolutely love this look, which is completely different to the look that we achieved on the other side, which is much more lifted and sculpted. This one gives the impression of a much fuller, rounder cheek, which I think is incredibly youthful. Both sides, incredibly youthful. It just depends on your face shape and the look that you're wanting to achieve. I don't think this drags my face down at all because I've been really, really careful not to go too low. If the blush started to hit down near the top of my lip, I think that would be too much for me and it would give more of a dragged, droopy appearance, but applying it a little bit higher, we have no problems whatsoever. You can also incorporate the principles of a more lifted sculpted cheek alongside the principles of a more fuller rounded cheek. Obviously it isn't going to look as lifted as the lifted sculpted side, but you are going to get a little bit of lift. So to do this, just take a little bit more blush and go on the outer corners of the eye in a diagonal motion all the way up to the temples like we did before, and it gives a much more rounded yet sculpted look. Once again, if you want to emphasize the fullness of the cheek even more, you can use a radiant or a dewy blush to do this with. Just be warned with this, if you have a lot of skin texture or a lot of open pores around the corners of the nose, because you're going a lot closer to the corners of the nose in this instance, if you use something that's a little over glowy, you are going to emphasize those large pores or that texture. So it may be better if you do have texture and open pores to go for a blush that is on the more natural matte side rather than something that's overly glowy. If you have a really round face and you're wanting to disguise it a little bit, make it look a little bit slimmer, there are ways of doing that with blush as well. And again, you can use contour for this, but if you feel like contour is a little bit harsh for you, the softer way to do it is with blush. You're going to apply a little bit of blush up the sides of the forehead from the temples to the top of the forehead and slightly rounder. By doing that, the eye is drawn to that area and everything is pushed in, making your face seem a little bit less round. This can also give the most beautiful sun-kissed glow, like you've been outside enjoying yourself in the sun all day, you've stayed outside for a tiny bit too long and you've got that lovely, pinky, youthful glow. I mean, I would never ever recommend that you actually do that. Sun protection is incredibly important. However, fake it, fake it, it still looks gorgeous. If you have a really long face like me, however, and you're wanting to make it look a little shorter, there are a couple of ways of doing this. First of all, 
pop a little bit of blush on the bridge of the nose and blend out horizontally. This will draw the attention to the center of the face, making your face look a little shorter. But you can also add to that sunkissed glow. And instead of stopping at the corner of the forehead, you can go all the way around. This will not only make the forehead look shorter, but if you use the technique for a fuller, more bouncy cheek alongside horizontal blending through the bridge of the nose, it will make everything look shorter and more rounded. If you still feel you haven't achieved the look that you're wanting to create, tap a little bit of blush on the tip of the chin. This will not only emphasize that sunkissed glow, but it'll also emphasize the shortening effect. I don't think I look too ridiculous. It's a lot of blush, I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot of blush for one person to have on their skin, but I think I can make this work if I even it out a little bit. I am going out in a bit. <laughs> So yeah, a little bit of touching up is going to be necessary. However, during this video, I'm hoping you found it helpful. We have slimmed down a rounded face. We've plumped up a long face. We have achieved a really plump, youthful, bouncy cheek without dragging the face down. We've also achieved a really beautiful, sculpted, lifted appearance to the cheekbone. And not only that, we've also disguised a hooded droopy eye with the diagonal placement of the blush on the outer corner of the eye running through the eyebrow all the way up to the temples. And if that's not enough for you, you can also disguise dark circles if you pick the right color blush just by going slightly higher underneath the eye than you would usually take your blush with your blush shade. Just saying blush can do wonders. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please try out these techniques in the comfort of your own home to figure out which one you prefer on you, on your face shape. I never stick to one. Sometimes I do a lifted look, other times I do a fuller, more rounded cheek, and I love both of them. It just depends on my mood and the look that I want to create that day. And please, never, allow anybody to tell you that you shouldn't or you can't if you are a certain age. There are no rules, there are just a set of principles where makeup is concerned. Stuff what they say, do your makeup however you want. At the end of the day, blush is absolutely magic. Depending on where you place it, you can pretty much rewind the clock and look 10 years younger. It is that good. Anyway, I've placed a couple of videos over here that I think you might enjoy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.